Welcome to SEO Conspiracy. Com. And today, my friends, this is a continuation of the SEO Stories series, which started with Bill Swalski. But now, very different style. If uh, you started SEO in 1872, like my special guest did, you are definitely an old OG. And talking about G, we will introduce you to the concept of G-Spot SEO. But today we will talk about the superpower of SEO. And who else could I invite other than Superwoman herself, the diva of SEO, my dear friend Judith Lewis. Hello. <laughs> what an introduction. Hello, That's Wonder, fantastic. Wonder Woman. <laughs> yes, because, because, because. Many, many things we have to talk about. Uh, G-Spot SEO. Hold that thought, everyone. Hold that thought. G-Spot SEO. It will be an underlying theme in our conversations. But I wanted to start with the superpower of SEO and why we uh, hold some special skills that nobody else in the world are able to reproduce even the most powerful people in the world. But first, Judith, mm. like I said, you started SEO in 1872, <laughs> uh, uh, and you'd like to remind everyone that you were, the, you were there way before we did. How, in, what in the world? Like, I know, I know how, how it happened, but, but can you remind everyone what made you an SEO? How did you start this crazy was, idea? As all things are in SEO back then, it was an accident. I was running some websites. I was running my own website online. I wanted to sell stuff. And I was also working in mail servers. So I worked on... Um, basically creating crafting mail servers. So you remember send mail? No, you don't, because you never had to go through that horrific experience. But there was a mail server called send mail that was for um, non Windows machines. So Unix, remember Unix? No, you don't, because you didn't have to go through that pain. <laughs> and, uh, I, I know Unix. <laughs> yeah, no, well, I, I don't think many of your listeners probably had to go through the pain of Unix. If you ever want a better operating system, you know, Macs are based on the old Unix style. Mm. So, and that's why there are very few, well, there used to be very few viruses for Macs because they were much more difficult to design. But Unix mail servers were a pig. And so I actually had to learn TCP IP, DNS and bind and how um, shake handshakes and communications worked because that's how mail servers worked. So I, I went, I started hardcore programming, you know, all sorts of stuff, building my own servers. So I had my own mail servers, my own list servers. I, I was really at the forefront of that sort of thing, um, especially as a woman, which was a little bit weird because, you know, Women didn't usually get into hard tech that way. But I also had websites, sold stuff online, and I, I had to figure out how to get more attention to sell more stuff, mm. both from the mail server side of things and from e-commerce side of things. So yeah, it, it was just a natural progression. How do I make more money? This is the way. I remember people, it was pre-Google, pre-Google. Yeah. There, there, there was a very different world. We we we'll talk about pre Google search engines uh, on a different uh, podcast. But um, what I wanted to point out is, and why I want to document our our history is because it didn't exist before. It it's kind of unique in the history of humanity when you have the chance to stumble onto a uh, job or an industry that didn't exist before. Uh, you, you got into it and that's the point here. Uh, SEO story is the story of SEO told by the people who did it. And you are most definitely a masterpiece, <laughs> a, a central pillar in the history of, uh, of SEO. Uh, I really don't think of myself that way, I have to admit. I was there at the beginning, but so were a lot of other people. And, 
you know, they're off doing other things now, but I'm still here. I'm still enjoying it. And I think that's the key. In the beginning, we accidentally found SEO and I really enjoyed it because of my engineering mindset. And there were other people who stumbled onto it too, but they didn't necessarily have the same mindset. I have a degree in psychology. I did coding from basic and Pascal all the way through. I didn't do C sharp or C plus plus, but you know, all the way up through to about C. And so, you know, I, I do have a very technical background as well as a psychology degree. I did a lot of writing. And so doing this sort of thing mm. makes sense for that mix of brain, but it doesn't always make sense. So those people who fell mm. into it, like I did, they, we didn't, all of us stay with it. Before basic, did you ever learn with, uh, as a kid with logo, the total? You don't remember that? No, uh, I went. I I skipped assembler and machine and no, went no, straight. I'm talking into like him. I'm talking like way. Logo is like like to teach was in the eighties how to teach kids the the concept of coding. And it, wow, I remember that it sounds was a, easier than Pascal. No, no, Pascal is that's as a language. No, logo is uh, was. Uh, I just have this thought that 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 little wow. turtle that you need to tell, okay, go straight and then turn left. And that was my first uh, encounter wow. before basic. Mm. No, but at the science center, the Ontario science center, they did have a room that had a lot of things that were an awful lot like computing. So they had and or gates and you had to push the balls out of the right tubes at the top in order to get one ball out at the bottom with a that rang a bell and so you had to understand the logic of and or gates in order mm. to push either one through an or or two through an and in order to get the various different balls mm -hmm. to drop down to a single one at the bottom so you had to learn logic in order mm. to make that work and there were other logic pu puzzles like that mm. that i realized later on were like if this then that is exactly what you're kind of doing mm. with an and or gate the mindset, the key to that mindset, uh, you said you kind of suggested it is the solving the puzzle. You, uh, and people always tell me, oh, I wish I was there in the early day, affiliate links, that's end, blah, blah, tons of money. Blah. But the mindset required to start from a blank sheet, uh, from, from nothing is much different than being able to go on YouTube and search for how to make money with that sense. Uh, <laughs> I'm not saying there's one better than the other, <laughs> but people don't realize. Okay, I have a better, I have a better example. Go into your email uh, inbox and search the first time you heard about Bitcoin. Wow. I remember even with a friend, we were on Skype. And he said, let's go buy this thing. We went to, onto some forum, got in touch with some dude, and we were supposed to give him some money on PayPal, and he was supposed to send us in return some Bitcoin. My friend did it. I was like, no way. Like, this looks shady. <laughs> I'm not. So props to you guys if you made so much money because you bought Bitcoins like in so far in the away forever land ago <laughs> yeah yeah because trust me it wasn't i was I, I was there on skype and i said no i did not buy it and i'm not jealous because i decided that uh, <laughs> so you can't regret and you can't say oh i didn't make a couple of millions because i did i said no you had to have the mindset to be to, to foresee that bitcoin would eventually be something because that was not like a couple of uh, couple of dollars we were giving away, if I remember correctly. Uh, we, uh, my friend bought like like five hundred bucks, but yeah, <laughs> he's wow. happy today. Trust me, <laughs> he's good. <laughs> Buying five hundred worth of bitcoins back then uh, is worth a lot of money today. But anyways, it's the same kind of thing. It's easy to look back and say, I wish I was there in the early days of SEO, where you could rank on on. You could have free traffic from Google and you can rank on anything. Yeah. Uh, but so easily. Looking back, can, can you explain a little bit um, how you need to, this approach of, okay, we don't know anything. 
we didn't know how much weight how to optimize we had to figure out the title tag is kind of a strong you know element that you need to to put in the keyword and it will boost uh, a lot uh, anchor text on, on on backlinks also was a big one and that was basically the two two things we needed <laughs> title tag plus anchor text on backlinks yeah but we had to figure it out uh yeah, well, it was a lot of experimentation, mm -hmm. wasn't it? There were very few search engines at first, and they were crap. So what you did is you looked at the websites that were ranking well for the words that you were putting in, and you looked to see why. Now, back then, there were pages that were just basically dictionaries. They had every word mm -hmm. on them, and they were fucking useless, really seriously useless. Um, and then the, the ones that said that they had Britney Spears nude photos, and they didn't. They had car ads. So it was really easy to rank very quickly on the wrong search terms. And you would look at what those websites were doing. Now, we didn't have Majestic back then. We didn't have SEMrush. We didn't have any of the technology that we have nowadays. You had to go into the code and you had to figure out what they were doing. And you had to just basically try to copy and see what made a difference. And you knew that you had to be linked to, but to be found because the search engines were crap. So you were building links, not because links made a difference in ranking, but because without links, no one was going to find you. Mm. So you, you did links for, for what they should have been done for, which was interconnectivity between sites that, you know, were related. Scientific papers helped me a lot. And then SEO by the sea happened <laughs> and, and our friend Bill, but the patents, the patents were never really the key to me uh, because the format of the patent is profiling the, the scientist, looking at the scientific papers, uh, some patents, yeah, were interesting, but, but uh, how much did you go into this rabbit hole of the, <laughs> the scientific uh, studies uh, or scientific research about about search i really didn't until it became much more prevalent mm. so until you see the big explosion of google but post 2000 so when google started to become a significant player in the marketplace because i don't you know anyone who was around at the time remembers how revolutionary google was at the time it was either yahoo who pulled stuff from um open directory project, Inktomi that you had to pay to get listed in, and a few others that were decent. The rest were horrible. And then Google comes along and actually shows you a snippet from what's on the page. And that was a huge change from seeing open directory project edited stuff because at the time it was spammable. So open directory project was not safe. You could put something in there that you wanted and it could point anywhere. And until an editor took the time to come along and mm. change it, it was in there and you were ranking on it. So yeah, you, you really, you had to be savvy. You had to want to pick away at a problem and understand it. You had to want to dig and really understand what was going on. And I've probably at this point in my career forgotten more about SEO than some people know, because there's just so, mm. such a vast, a vast um, sea of information about the nuanced things in SEO mm. that will move you one position when you're low down. But you know, it doesn't, it's not the big wins. But when you're in the top three, those bits are what moves you from three to one. Mm. Two things. One is, uh searching i mean trying to figure it out and staring at those search engine results doing something and back then remember like it was in the middle of the night around 3 a.m french time when the data centers were moving and we had those dashboards so you do something then you see the data centers moving and the results are stuck for the next 24 hours so it was a lot of observation and i did it uh, throughout SEO contest. The first one, I pulled 3000 hours in three months. Okay. So of course, I'm no genius. If you if you work 3000 hours in three months on anything, you you should figure it out playing the Valiant or whatever you want racing cars. Uh, 
because because I, I got like like hypnotized. I I couldn't blink. I couldn't eat. I couldn't sleep. I, I just and I stared at those. Uh, at, it actually was one query, <laughs> uh, Major de Sigon, a stock eater in in English, for three months. Was the first time that I connected myself to Google on a mobile on my Motorola, the one that the flip one, the, the very cool one. The oh Razor. yeah, I had a flip yeah. one. It, it, so and cool. and it was the first time I, I I googled something on a mobile, and that was two thousand four. Um, that's what I call smelling the 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 smell of the syrup, trying to understand what does Google want, how and what to feed the beast. Uh, maybe maybe you have tools today that can analyze that footprint and all that stuff. But if you stay long enough, we had to do it manually. There was no even the even uh, the <laughs> the analytics. I mean, AW stats. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I still look at the raw log files every once in a while just to remind myself why I don't. <laughs> uh the the no yeah no no such no uh the crawler xenu 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 oh gosh <laughs> xenu link sleuth i right. remember xenu i think it's still around with the it alien is. head right. Right. and i'm pretty sure the guy is a conspiracy theorist because you get the banner along the middle about they are among us i i communicated with him once and he's definitely a little bit um weird <laughs> to say the least but uh, he gave us an invaluable tool for a period of time it was the uh, tool zenu link sleuth it, it was on every laptop i had it worked it worked it was doing the job for sure without it we would be blind at least we were we had only one eye open but but we had one eye because it of the crawler something. but like do you remember yahoo Oh, I can't remember the name, but it, Yahoo had a, a, a keyword research tool that was so much more accurate than Google. It actually gave you the real search volumes for keywords. Mm. That was amazing. And the first word, uh, word tracker also? Word tracker? Word tracker? I don't know. But oh, I will. I, I have to try to remember what that old uh, over, over something Anyway, it was an amazing tool. Um, yeah, I, I I don't remember the the the, the Yahoo rank no not rank tracker not well. See, that's when Alzheimer is hitting me. Uh, I, I kind of tend to forget some of those. Uh, it's when you don't need the stuff because we have so much information, so much knowledge that when we don't use the stuff, uh, we forget. The other day. I forgot which site was um, by mistake blacklisted from Google. One of the famous websites recently, you dot like a site colon and, and there was nothing to see. It wasn't LinkedIn. Yeah, LinkedIn. Okay. So so there was the trick where you uh, replace the letter O with a zero, but better yeah. if you use uh, the Russian alphabet yeah there's a letter that looks like an o <laughs> so, so we're playing tricks with others um with that uh russian letter instead of the o and when that linkedin thing came back uh someone played the trick saying hey your link not my, my website but to somebody else hey look your website also is out of google's index well, it was not because of that little trick. And I totally forgot. I totally forgot because I, I didn't use it. That's also something when uh, when you start searching, when you start exploring, and that was my point number two, it's about sharing. Alone, you are not going very far. You yeah. need to be a group. Yep, uh, absolutely. Uh, you have to be part of uh, a community uh, because uh, you bounce ideas off of each other. You're constantly mm. like, oh, what about this? Oh, what about that? Oh, yeah, yeah. So if you don't if you don't have that to bounce back and forth, you get stuck. You can't really progress. Now let's go to G Spot SEO oh. because Oscar Wilde said everything in the world is about sex, except sex, which is about power. How much of a advantage 
and disadvantage was it to be a female attractive female with an amazing set of boobs <laughs> in the middle of those this nerdy crowd <laughs> in the early days i think it was a, a disadvantage absolutely a big disadvantage to be female in the early days um what what the advantage was was that i had previously worked in the porn industry so that really hardened me to some of it but some of it was still hurtful there was a guy who's now dead thankfully and um he said that i would never amount to anything because i was female not for any other reason but simply because of my gender and so i think being female was really tough back then now luckily it was at SES, um, Search Engine Strategies, a conference. So luckily, there were people there in the speaker's room and, and at the conference who were quite friendly and very nice. And they're still around in the industry today. And I still appreciate the, the, the support they gave me back then. But it was very difficult being female. I mean, if you took control of the situation and you realized it was because you were female and therefore a threat... Mm. then it was fine and you could come out on top. But there were times when it did get to me to be picked on and to be um, singled out simply because I was female. And it's worse because I'm a female with boobs because it, it's more threatening, it seems, to a guy mm. or to people. Um, I won't just say guys, but it was just the guys um, to have an attractive female with boobs who actually had a brain. That's what and it apparently was. I still scare people <laughs> because I've had this fem feedback before, but apparently it's scary um, to be female with boobs and a brain. Shocking. That, that was my point. The boobs are not the issue. The brain is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If I had big boobs and no brain, it everybody would have been fine they would have just written me off and been like yeah yeah whatever go back and and have another glass of wine but, um but instead i was smart and and boobilicious so yeah it's a threat and i think people deal with threats in different ways and some people go on the offensive and are abusive and um so at conferences up until last year up until last year i've been sexually harassed sexually assaulted um i've been I've been spoken to in a, in a way you would never speak to anyone, let alone, you know, a, a colleague or a peer. So it's still difficult. And if in 2019, I had the back of my head grabbed and forcibly kissed by another speaker at a conference. Now, it's 2019. It's not 2009 or 1990 yeah, 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 exactly it's 2019 like guys seriously it's not appropriate to do that and especially to somebody like me it's really inappropriate to do that so if i'm still facing this i can't imagine what younger women in the industry are facing today but hopefully what they will do is they will say well you know what if judith can go through it and is still in it then i can too because you know what the guy who grabbed the back of my head and forcibly kissed me probably has a very small penis, very small <laughs> penis. And, you know, men who drive sports cars, also very small penises. Um, and men who are threatened by women with big boobs and big brains, also very small penises. Um, so, you know, women, you just have to keep that in mind. If they're abusive towards you, just think, oh, I feel really sorry for your girlfriend or boyfriend because your penis is so small. I don't know how you give them any satisfaction and it really helps the mindset. <laughs> now you, Laurent, you have never been rude to me. You have only ever treated me lovely. So I can't imagine how large yours must be. I was going to take <laughs> a little bit of the outside this context by saying that this is within the SEO community and yes, alcohol, drugs, stupidity, is part of of this community like any others but uh, while you were talking i was thinking about what's going on right now in 2020 in the gaming community and especially the live streaming community uh wow we 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 our shit is pale compared to what's going on over there because they got the whole like from racism to harassment to 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 like all of it every week every single day there's a scandal on in the gaming industry 
uh, about this kind of behavior. Oh, yeah. Uh, and the worst part is they know they are exposed. They are, they are live, they are on social media. They, back then, um, especially back then, there were no, no Facebook, no, none of that. Uh, we will get into uh, the superpower super power of SEO f to destroy or make uh, a reputation. But you are right to say that uh, it was a different time. And especially when you're French, you can get away with a lot more. <laughs> then sorry guys not fair the french win with the girls always at the end of the day <laughs> no, matter the the size. Is, no, no matter the size and no matter what we do just pretend you're french it'll work <laughs> it, i said my joke on twitter uh so the pickup line is um do you have uh, some french in you and you say no i'm like will you like some <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, that's a little more crass. I'm pretty sure that a Frenchman <laughs> yeah. come up with a better pickup line than that. Yeah, no, that's just, that's just a, a stupid one. Uh, French, <laughs> French uh, uh, the French way of well, the problem is like it's like Italians, male, because the the, the Italian girls and the French girls uh, are not the easiest to flirt with. They 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 they're kind of it's kind of painful. Okay, it's a whole process. <laughs> well. Well, when you get out of uh, of your territory, French becomes like a superpower. So to go back to, see, it's always sex, SEO, same thing. Always, yeah. This superpower of SEO, and we scare people within the digital marketing industry because supposedly we can, it's borderline like hacking, you know? It's like, like we, we, we can manipulate things. We can manipulate the conversation. We can manipulate the content and we can manipulate who will access this content. Uh, before going on the air, I told you, yeah, I think we have more power than even the director of, uh, of the CIA or even the president of the United States because um, remember when we spoke about the standards and how yeah. we need to regulate the industry. But since we don't exist, and I read every single page of the Big Tech hearing report, we don't exist. Yeah, we were never mentioned. They, they have no clue we exist. They talk about search, they talk about the algorithms, they talk about calling, they talked about indexing and all that stuff. No mention of people. So Google is the master of the world, Google dominates, and who dominates Google? We do, <laughs> of course. Who who run the world? Yeah, <laughs> and nobody knows we exist, which is the beautiful part, or the well, scary part. Well, beautiful but bad because yeah. you do get some people who take advantage of that, and who will take people's money and not do the agreed upon tasks. So yes, it's good that we're flying under the radar, but at the same time, it means that there's no body that regulates us and that that holds us to account when we do something wrong there's a time for everything and we need regulations we need standards it's been 20 years uh, it's about time yeah yeah it's but, been more than 20 years but, yeah it's it's absolutely time we've almost had one full generation mm, of seo because mm. at 25 years that's a generation so we need to have something and that's why i started judging is because I wanted to hold this industry to a higher standard. So I thought, well, this is a good place to start. <laughs> so in 2011, we started judging. But, you know, we have moved the industry along, but we still need this punishment when somebody does something wrong. And, and lawyers do things that are wrong. Accountants do things that are wrong. SEOs do things that are wrong. So, you know, we... we if it's really bad, if we if we do something wrong in that we we suggest a homepage change and it doesn't work, that's one thing. But it's another thing if you take someone's money and don't produce mm. results or anything mm. like no paperwork, nothing. You just take their money and say, yes, mm. of course, I'll SEO your site and nothing changes. So we need some sort of accountability to demonstrate, yes, this is what was done. Sadly, it didn't work because here is all the documentation of all the things that were done for your site mm. and how it changed or impacted your SEO mm. rankings for Google, Bing, Yandex, Baidu, Naver, whatever, says Nam. 
IMO, it's the biggest lie right now in the SEO industry. This type of uh, client agency relationship where the agency is very good at keeping the client on board. I call it client satisfaction. They will oh. never reach any goals. They will never make any money. It's a loss. But the agency is very good at showing you Oh, look, you're getting more keywords. Uh, you're getting, it's, it takes time, sir. It takes a year, blah, blah. And, you pay, and, and because they don't put the right means in front of uh, the goal, uh, they satisfy the <laughs> content. The client is content month after month after month after month. Uh, at the end of the day, the agency. From my little poll, uh, I figured out that on average, one SEO on an agency will spend 60 minutes or less per client. Yeah. Per, uh, oh, I forgot, was it week or month? No, I think it was. Oh, probably week. You got to well, do week, more than yeah. that per yeah. month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was week. It was week. But even 60 minutes or less per week uh, on, a, on a, a website uh, can do much. I mean, depending, of course, of the website. But the problem with this type of... Um, if you have a big budget, if you have 10K and more per month, an agency might do a good job for you. But if you pay 3, 5K per year, I guarantee you zero results guarantee yeah, yeah absolutely yeah no I, I have a friend who is running a pr agency and she was paying an agency i think 350 a month and i said you know that's like that's not half a day of my time i think that's like an hour of my time and you're paying that per month to this agency to get you better rankings now all the agency did was write blog posts about keywords, but they didn't build proper links. They didn't build a proper internal linking structure. The IA of the site was questionable. The usability, the UX of the site was not the greatest. So just from a UX point of view, they failed. And they were the build agency as well. UX yeah. failed. Um, IA didn't really make sense. So that's kind of a fail. They failed to understand the reason why they were writing content to keywords. And therefore, they failed at that. And so they failed to get the client any more customers. Mm. And ultimately, as SEOs, our job is to make other people money or make ourselves money. But, you know, we're, we're in the business of making money and making more money uh, and not just through charging. We're, mm. we're in charge of making money for our clients or our boss. Even if it's so wrong, morally <laughs> wrong, it, it is indeed a superpower to be able to keep on a client on a, who is guaranteed to have a loss, okay? <laughs> but keeping on for months or years and the client has no clue of what's going on because <laughs> it's some kind of magic trick that he or she doesn't understand. Um, it is, uh, yeah, I mean, good and evil, what, 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 is, uh, what is right and wrong. It's doing a good job for the client mm. to keep the client happy, but not doing a good job for the client's business. Mm. Exactly. You know, it's constant sucking up to the client. Mm. I had a, I, t I used to teach a course for e-consultancy on SEO and I had someone come through MPPC and I had someone come through and they said, well, we're paying our, our agency. I think it was 6K or 8K, a lot of money per month to do the SEO, but they've never given me a report in 18 months, 18 months without a report <laughs> for six or eight K a month. You can put together a fucking report, man. Even if it's just like SEO monitor, SEMrush or something, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, even if it's just not even a white labeled one, you can do something <laughs> just to send it to the client once a month <laughs> if they're paying you that much money. And that's just lazy. And it's just sucking up money from people for no reason. And I said, well, maybe it's because they're maintaining your website. Oh, yes, she said they do. But that's a different budget. So she was paying them for that as well as for the SEO. And they weren't doing anything on the SEO side of things for 18 months. They got away with that. So there are a lot of people that are getting away with a lot of things mm. simply because we don't have standards. There's nothing that somebody says that, oh, you should have this certificate or you should know this. If you're an SEO, you should know this. There's nowhere where we can find that. Moz has put stuff together. SEO Camp, we have talked about before, they, they've put stuff together. But 
there's not really anything that is a standard that we can say across the industry. Every technical SEO knows this. Every content SEO knows this. And every link building SEO knows this. Mm. There's nothing. Mm. To be the devil's advocate, the issue is uh, in the world of search, you have paid and organic. Paid search, you buy real estate, you buy a keyword, you buy a ranking, especially with Google Ads. SEO, you pay to prove to, to try to prove that you are relevant, which is uh, not an ex. You know what I'm saying? So, so um, from the client's perspective, or from the people who don't know how it works, you look at this and you say, yeah, I must do it because everybody says uh, it's good. And in a couple of minutes, we will explain why SEO or search in general is the best acquisition pipeline since the beginning of history and until the end uh, for one single reason, intent. But that's that's next. Uh, right now, it's about, yes, uh, we must do SEO because uh, everybody does it and my competition does it and they make a lot of money, so let's get into it. But it's still this mystery box. And today, I don't know about you, but I'm at a level where I don't work with anyone who doesn't want to understand. If they don't yeah. want to go through the 10 to 15 hours where I will explain to them how to pull, I'm not going to transform them into an expert that can go on, on stage and do a keynote, but I will tell them, okay, you pull that lever and action reaction. This is going to happen. What do you expect? How does that work? The main mechanisms, because if they don't, it's too important. And if you just pay someone, freelance, agency, doesn't matter, and expect results, I guarantee that the results will never be up to your expectations. You might have results, yeah. but they will never be up there unless you understand how it is. Yep. So now, yeah, it's a bit some kind of black box. And, and even us, uh, <laughs> we, okay, to be truthful with our listeners, uh, and they saw it with Bill because uh, the short hair, long hair, beard, no beard. So the sequence, this is going online before another video we shot, which was about how to simplify SEO. Is SEO difficult or simple? And ourselves, we kind of got mixed up and started renting and afterwards <laughs> i realized yeah we didn't we simplify well. we didn't simplify anything but it's all good it's it's not for everyone go 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 watch neil patel if you want a tutorial in, in, in <laughs> oh my god please don't watch neil patel please don't because i'm so tired of the things that he peddles that are not true <laughs> the, the the he's a meme at this point uh, i've never seen anyone Nobody ever watched anything, any of his content. And for the first time I watched his content, I told you, because nobody nobody likes what he does, but nobody ever watched. So I was like, I'll, I'll take a look. And what I found out is it's not really lies. It's just so outdated and so basic, and it's yeah. over-promising. It's pure clickbait. Very attractive title, but the meat behind it, what it delivers is, uh, yeah, whatever. Yeah. It's sad because to have that, he, he put a lot of effort into becoming recognized, but yeah, he's got nothing new. And now he's a tool guy. And I think that's a smart pivot for him because now he can sell tools and subscriptions to tools off of his name. And I think that's where he's going to see that residual income just keep coming in over and over. It's... Uh... If if I want to defend Nepal, I would say, okay, it's one thing to have family money uh, and it's another to be wise enough to go suck up to the good crowd of of the uh, when he was a teenager he went to he went to the right places and suck up to the right people then he invested in a couple of good tools like crazy egg and uh kiss metrics and, 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 and to the public. Uh, you know, uh, you best suggest and then so the oh, yeah, so okay. so so even if he no idea but repurposing or investing in the right tools, 
we can grant him that that he he manage uh his thing well the only issue here is like any of this kind of seos or digital marketer or, or the what i call the dream sellers the, the the ones who will change your life with blogging okay or have the secret to to uh, give you financial freedom with facebook something or this type of people once if they stay in the corner of the web where they scam it's fine the issue is when they try to become legit by the people from the industry and it's up to them if they stay yeah. in the corner of the web where they belong <laughs> stay in the corner where you belong <laughs> yeah i think there are scammers in every every industry as i said you know even in law and accounting you've got scammers but our industry hasn't got a body so law has a body um, accountants have a body mm. they have various different bodies mm. whether they're chartered or non-chartered and lawyers also whether they're solicitors or barristers mm. there are bodies that regulate them and dictate how much they should know and also require continuous professional mm. development you have to keep learning we have nothing in our industry that says you are required to continually develop your knowledge. So Neil Patel and his old stuff, he has no, there's no body that's going to say, well, you know what, this is now 12 years out of date. You haven't kept up your CPD. And so therefore you're no longer an SEO. That's it. You know, your, your license has been withdrawn. This doesn't exist in our industry. So we have no way of demonstrating that, that, you know, knowledge has moved on and therefore his old knowledge mm. is now not valid. So we need, I wish we had a structure or something where you say you, you should have taken this type of course, not this specific course, but this type of course that teaches you these yeah. things and therefore know yeah. this stuff. You're right to point that out because a scam would be illegal. Well, since it's not illegal, it's allowed and it's up to the moral compass of the individual to be okay with charging 10 times the price of something that is outdated uh, since uh, 10 years ago or five years ago. Uh, it's something else we talked about with moral <sighs> compasses. Where yeah, do you draw yeah. the line? Mm. And I think we're all, we all have a very complex moral compass. It's not really simple. It's very complex. And we all have lines that we won't cross. So I won't do online reputation management for someone who is genuinely, legitimately reprehensible and I, I don't think that it it's not a job I would take on, but somebody mm. else might because they mm. might think, well, everyone has a right to a private life. And if they are a morally reprehensible person, I don't care if they want to mm. pay me money to get that out. Like I there's a chocolate company and they the, the CEO and the family of the CEO support anti-gay rights companies um, and movements and and they support a church that is anti-women, anti-gay rights and you know, it's, do I, do I buy their chocolate? Well, it's not as simple as that. It's not just the CEO. All of the people that they employ are affected by my decision as to whether to buy their chocolate or not. So where do I draw the line? Where do I draw the ethical line? They do buy ethically sourced chocolate. So they do minimum fair trade and they do better than that. They buy from sources that are not normal, Uganda and places like that, who otherwise wouldn't be able to sell their cocoa. So where do I draw the line? They're doing some good things and some really bad things. What? Where is my moral line? Do I buy their stuff and help support their staff, help support their purchasing of cocoa from Uganda and other places that normally wouldn't sell? Or do I say, I'm just going to say, because you support this church personally, not, not as a business, personally, because you personally give money to this church that is anti-women and anti-gay rights and, and anti-everything, then I won't buy your chocolate. It's it's a it's a difficult decision because in in not only not buying their chocolate but deliberately telling people not to i am hurting their business but their business is doing good has lots of women in senior management positions is anti-discriminatory and all sorts of amazing things it's just their ceo and the ceo's family who are assholes you 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 mentioned the word uh irreputation uh, i want to keep on that for a second because now there's a term called the cancel culture. Ah, yeah. But SEOs, especially when you try to attack, I don't know about UK or US, but in France, 
if someone at one point started to attack us, and I'm talking about the old days of Twitter, like 10 years ago, <laughs> okay, we would destroy that person on his curriculum vitae, which is the front page of Google that we own. Maybe we can't take out the first one because that's the brand, the website. I, I, I was able with one website to rank seven results with the WordPress tags and all that stuff. Seven out of 10 results were mine, plus all the images. Uh, what was funny is uh, it was another SEO from Belgium. And, uh, <laughs> that, that shows how good the guy was because he couldn't get, uh, get rid of, uh, of us. And there was two of us. Um, and he DMCA, so he DMCA is an official yeah, uh, com complaint. Digital Millennium to, Copyright yeah. Act. Uh, because we put his photo on, on a, a post. So he was able to get the photo removed. So what we did is, okay, you want to play that game? So we took the closest photo that looked like him, which was a penis with glasses. <laughs> so the row of images was dick with glasses, all the lawsuits that he got and that are published, uh, and, and for not weeks, not for months, but years, until I decided that it was time to delete everything out of all the people I clashed and all the people I attacked because, uh, but instead of the cancel culture of today where people don't have context, we are detectives. Yeah. I investigated, I, I, I got proof. It's like, yeah, the, the Belgian police called me to get my files on that guy because I was doing a better job than them to, to discover what was going on. Yeah. Uh, so again, back to the moral compass. Yeah, you can go fight uh, cars and, and feel like Don, Don Quixote fighting the windmills. Uh, but if you are a good SEO, you do the job, you investigate, you yeah. play detective. Uh, yeah. Well, isn't that what it was? It Annie Cushing did with her? niece and nephew when they went missing you know mm. we we are by trade almost in it, it, we're, we're detectives if you were there early if you were part of the seo industry early on you're a detective because you had to hunt down the clues mm. of how to rank well so you had to have that really engineering mindset you w had to want to pick apart the puzzle you had to want to disassemble the radio and pull all the bits out and see how mm. all of the circuits worked Otherwise, mm. you, you don't really make a good technical uh, SEO. And to a certain extent, not a good link builder. Well, you could make a good link builder, not a good link auditor, because you're not looking at everything. Uh, no, you can't become a good link builder. You, you can be a follower, uh, link builder, yeah, but, but, yeah. but but you you won't be the ones who, who find the good spots. You won't be the one who... You have to be a detective to find them. Exactly. I uh, said to a client just today... I said in my in my report, I was like, so you probably know about this hack to your site, but these links still exist. So I think what we need to do is we need to disavow them. And she said, what hack? <laughs> and I said, well, you see all the links on this on this page here on the on the website. Um, I just you know, I've, I've screenshotted it just for reference. So that you knew that I had seen it and was, you know, aware of it. She's like, what hack? I don't know anything about a hack. That's an old site. I can understand why it would be hacked, but that's not I don't know anything about this. And I was mm. like, oh, okay, well, here is what I found. And I think, mm. you know, if you're not a good SEO, you're not going to find that. One of my clients right now, I, I think I, I've probably referenced them, but is this is the first episode. So the first time I'm talking about them, I have a little bit of a girl crush on um, one of their main competitors. Why? Because they have done some beautiful, <laughs> spammy, shitty link building. I mean, they have redirected old domains and then kept building links to those domains mm. smart why because you can't see them how how would you see mm. them you can't mm -hmm. unless you know the domain that's been redirected you can't see those links so you don't know where they're getting links from because you cannot see the domains that they are redirecting to rank the main domain mm -hmm. very smart girl crush on them they're doing such a good <laughs> job really some sexy link building and you know one day they'll figure out it's me that i'm his talking about them and hopefully they'll get in touch. We'll have coffee or wine or probably shots and, <laughs> and share some more stories, but they have done some sexy ass link building. 
But if you're not a detective, you wouldn't have realized. And he would have said, well, I don't know why they're ranking so well. They don't have many links. Internet records everything forever. And there's always somebody watching. If you know, one of the most impressive uh, detective uh, I did was, okay, there was a trolling account on Twitter, a SEO trolling account that was saying shit about the French SEOs. And first of all, the footprint of the smileys, the way he was doing the smileys were pretty particular. And then the little bit of social engineering, who he was shitting on and talking to them and, and like really like like half a day of detective work I figured out who he was addressed him <laughs> I'd say okay you got 24 hours to delay the account or I tell everybody it's you and you know the message when you delete an account or it's banned is not the same on Twitter. So you say, look, I, I, I reported the account and now it's banned. And the message did, was not that type of message. It was, so I was right and the account was gone. So it, to that level of detective where we can really, really find someone, um, a little bit of social engineering, the footprints and even in negative SEO, like who benefits from uh, from from you <laughs> losing, who uh, who is yeah. who, uh, and even in the hacker, okay, hacking in general, people have this whole imagination about the skills of hacker. Well, it's much easier hire get hired in a tape agency as a housekeeper in a company. Okay, go go clean the offices at night and just. Uh, you do, you do that. Turn over the keyboards. Yeah. All the passwords are going to be underneath. <laughs> no need to <laughs> exploit some vulnerability on the website. No, or uh, it'll be on the on the screen, just to the side of the screen. Yeah. Or it'll be under the mouse. So that's a trick. <laughs> Sometimes it's under the mouse. Or uh, or it's some hackers do the the trashes. Or I mean, um, there is a lot of technical aspects to SEO, but the common sense part of it and the mindset, it's 80%. Uh, yeah. I, I, the analogy I use is with uh, the sports I practice, uh, I do downhill mountain biking. When you risk your life, it's going very fast down the mountain and the trees are and the rocks don't move <laughs> and, and the speed is pretty high and the slope is pretty steep. So you do need some skills, okay? But the mindset is 80% because, because if you're not scared and if you can fight your brain when the brain says break because it's scary and you say, no, I'm not going to break, you win. Uh, Until you meet a tree that uh, doesn't get out of your way and yeah. the tree meets yeah. you and you stop with a force of deceleration that causes, mm. you know, as you know, damage to your bones, including your spine. 40 broken bones in my body <laughs> to account for. Uh, that account, that accounted, maybe more, <laughs> maybe probably definitely more. Uh, but but when, you, when you realize that such a dangerous sport, which seems to be very requires a lot of skills is in fact up to 80% uh, in, in the mindset of no fucks given. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Unplug and, and, and just, uh, yeah, go down and, and they will end up well go at down. one point. Uh, are we still on G spot SEO? So G spot SEO, let's go back to G spot. <laughs> Why G spot SEO? Because in the future, um, podcast with my dear Judith and today we are very soft so let's go let's hit it up about sex at all let's hit it up I did say that you must have a very big penis no but uh I'm not good no I don't uh, it just average I just know how to use it guys who say they're average are often not average is what I've experienced in my life No, no 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 just just a regular guy just uh it's just a matter of uh, 
experience, I guess. Mm. <laughs> and you need to, you need a little bit of experience, a little bit like SEO. This, this, you know, this ten thousand hour concept yes. of things yep. where where people get it wrong is that they believe that to learn a skill you need ten thousand. No, it's when you want to become a champion, when you want to become really good at something, you need to work that that hard. Yeah, absolutely. But SEOs, yeah, 10,000 hours to become a good SEO, that's pretty much the pay, the price to pay. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And it's it's work. You have to, it's the hard graft. It's not grabbing my boobs. It's actually doing something with your life. You've never grabbed my boobs. I've grabbed your boobs, but you've never grabbed mine. I no. fondled your boobs. I've, I've fondled various parts of your body. But, but uh, I, will <laughs> oh, next, I, I will next time. I, I'm oh, warning you. you. <laughs> I'm warning you. I will. I will do uh, an attempt to. Uh, I will do we'll a boobs. See, you, I, I will do a boob, boobs attack. So we'll, we'll, I know that you're going to fondle my boobs. No, 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 saying, no, 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 no. We'll, we'll do like a boobs fight, like like boobs against boobs we're going type to of fight thing. With our boobs, yes. <laughs> but Minor, bigger, I'll win. <laughs> G Spot SEO by Judith Lewis is. Um, everybody thinks that she's a very serious, very educated, well-spoken, respectable, and uh, high skill, high reputation, head judge, European search awards, kind of just very, very like, but we both know, and we said it, Oscar Wilde said it, everything is about sex in life. So why would SEO not be about sex? True. Where is the parallel here? It's the same thing. You want to either rape Google, seduce Google. You can take it from behind, front, up, down, be creative, do the whole Kama Sutra, just be very simple, five minutes and you go to sleep. Uh, but the five minutes that you go to sleep, you never rank very well after that. <laughs> <laughs> the seduction part of Google and it's also a love and hate relationship we have with Google. Uh, very, uh, how can they say? Where, where, where people think that oh, they must. Uh, I, can, I can't. I can't explain it. It's too difficult for me to explain this love hate relationship with Google because when you are in the middle of it, I think from an outside perspective, maybe people can analyze. And I, I've been uh, a therapist, a sex therapist for a relationship with Google. No, I've 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 read um, theories like doctorates to analyze uh, the search industry, and in France there is another SEO called Olivier Andrieux who is the nice guy with the clean uh, the the clear color shirts, and I'm the black always wearing black. So so he, he analyzed. Uh, analyzed us as like like uh, angel and demon type of thing and he was lo looking at this love-hate relationship with google so from the outside perspective you are like wow this is deep well when you're in it you are just doing it and this is how it is yeah so maybe it's history true. will look back at us and say something different that we thought we were <laughs> Well, history will definitely look back and say, you know, that slide deck you did in 2016, it's wrong now. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. That's for sure. We were talking uh, about this, you know, looking back at your old decks from 10 or so years ago. And, and yeah, some of them are not correct, especially when we were theorizing about the future. Um, but a lot of the decks that I did before, they still, they still hold truths in them so that fundamentally mm. they still... They still work. I shouldn't say that because now everybody's going to go download the ones that have been downloaded before and do well. Um, but I have a one deck about keyword mm. research that's really, really good. Um, and it's it it's helped a lot of people do very, very well. But also, you know, there are decks out there that are crappy. I've seen people do presentations at conferences where they're actually completely wrong. So those are the not the decks that you should be reading. But we we love to hate Google. And we love to hate each other. Um, and I think we always want to be on top. Most of us want to be on top. Um, some of us, 
so, not me, but some people are happy to be a bottom, but I, I'm much more happy on top. So there are a lot of people vying for a lot of attention from a very small number of people. And that can cause friction. That can cause discontent. Because too many people, you can only be one or two on top, okay? It's not yeah, so much room. <laughs> <laughs> There's not much room up there on top. So, so yes, of course, it's going to cause some discomfort or <laughs> disappointments or hate or whatever. But first, uh, just a point about the idea that um, SEO must adapt and today i see way too much seos talking about uh, version 2010 of seo which is ranking on google the computer version with text yeah. hosted on web pages we started with that i think the world of search today is way beyond text hosted on web pages that rank on google the computer version or the mobile version of the computer Google, okay? Search is everywhere. It's a predictive search, Google Discover and all that stuff. Um, so I do feel that, yeah, adapt or die is what SEO pretend to be. But looking at it today, remember that, that the tweet where you ask, okay, what is the course that I give to, uh, or that where I send someone who wants to yeah. learn about SEO copywriting? And you had no, no answer. Nobody was able to answer. No one had an answer. There's, there exist. are no good courses out there for someone who's new, who wants to learn legitimate, good, well-structured SEO. There just isn't anything out there. So I did end up writing something and I did end up doing it myself. But it's internal, so it, mm. it's not being shared beyond the company. But there was nothing I could do, mm. no, nowhere I could send them to teach them what I needed mm. them to know about the fundamentals of SEO and how it works. And I don't think that's right. It's not about free courses from Moz or mm. courses at Moz aren't free. It's not about free courses from SEMrush either. It's not about paid courses that are now out of date by years because, you know, they were published once and then never updated, mm. but you still have to pay for them. It's about understanding what's happening right now and what's relevant right now and therefore what we need to do right now. I think I got it. I think I know. I just I just figured it out. And because uh, I, I was into the Montessori school system since oh, yeah. kindergarten mm -hmm. and they teach us how to think instead of what to think. Yes. So... The problem here is that the courses you mentioned are all wrong. It's just the wrong mindset. If you want to become a good SEO, you need to learn how to think, yes, not, not what, what to think. If you exactly. ask yourself the right questions, the answers will be in the questions. You just need to learn how to ask yourself those great questions that will define um, the, the path you take. And especially... With all those, it was fun the first time most did this rank, uh, ranking factor study, and everybody was like, okay, um, uh, wet finger, uh, title tag is stronger than H1. Cool. That was a long time ago. Now, the ranking, the, the, the guys, hey, I studied 2 million uh, URLs and I found that, blah, blah, blah. That's not a scientific method. That's, that's like feeding the answers to your questions because you have something to sell. While when you search, you don't know where you will land and you don't even know if you will get an answer. That's the right way to search. So now, maybe that's it. Maybe everything is wrong because it's all about learning how to think, the mindset if you got the if you have the right mindset you, the solutions the the how to is easy it, it's not a, it, it's obvious it's common sense so people learn the how to and they don't have the mindset but now respect guys if you just want to rank on a bed and breakfast in buttfuck arizona seo 101 will do if you want to play with the big boys local seo i don't know <laughs> 
I, every time you say rank, all I can think of is it sounds so much like wank. And so many guys and women out there who are trying to do SEO, that's all they're doing is they're wanking into a jar and hoping it sticks. Okay, now we are getting into a different territory where the wanking, the people who talk, a big talk, I like to, I like to talk, talk the walk and walk the talk. Yeah. Talk yeah. the walk and walk the talk, okay? SEO conspiracy is an example where I say, back in the days when the, in the blogging era, I, I started a real blog, not about SEO, like a real blog with authors. And it's because I was like, I want to prove that I can, if I'm going to tell you to open a blog, maybe I should. And same with SEO conspiracy to, with the whole content marketing thing and around it. Uh, because, because um, now, the proof is on the screen and I get, since I started in April, now I do have clients, they invest in a video studio, <laughs> they invest, they, they, they got it, they figured out because I did it and I, and they see the results. Uh, and if, even if, if it's a tiny baby and I'm just starting out, I've been alive five minutes in the English language uh, talking about SEO uh, because the whole like judge thing doesn't matter that doesn't count for the the real world <laughs> let's let's no. put it this way now just because you're a judge doesn't mean you know what you're doing <laughs> yeah no but the, what i'm saying is like it, it, it to be known in this um this uh search award uh community uh, has nothing to do with the rest of the SEO world or of the people interested in SEO. This is it. The people interested in SEO. It's about the people doing SEO, the elite, the, the, the top 1% of the agencies and the freelancers. Uh, but it has nothing to do with the people interested in SEO. Yeah. Those people will just see the awards, the sticker on a website of a tool, and they will buy because of that sticker. And it's good because it works and yeah. we're lucky to be part of the best awards of them all because you have a lot of shitty awards that's for oh, sure <laughs> well you know i always like a full-on stiffy in my bed not a semi <laughs> you, you, you you that, that was a good one that was a good one. Oh, i don't know where where you pulled that one but yeah. now to get in bed okay what is your advice if you want to get in bed with their soul, meaning if you want to get a good SEO on your side? I have, let's, let's say I have no money and um, I got time so I can do things, but I, I don't have any money. And there's an event uh, and you have Judith uh, with uh, all the superstars of SEO there. How can I how can I uh, get one, your attention and two, some value? What, what should I ask? How, um, uh, how do I start? Where do I start? Yeah, it's, I think if you've got, don't be shy, don't be shy because if I or somebody else who is a superstar in your mind, um, am talking at a conference to somebody, you know, if our, if we're not, looking like we're one on one with somebody giving them specific advice, which is we're sat at a computer and pointing at things, then it's probably okay to come up and chat and listen at the very minimum, just listen to what was being spoken about. If it's a private conversation, you'll be told if it sounds like a private conversation, you'll realize it. if it doesn't just listen and comment or ask a question that makes sense and say, Oh, I remember in your talk, you said X, does that mean when you say what you've just said that, you know, it's a follow on from that point or whatever, engage and demonstrate that you've listened and taken on board what was said in a conference talk. If you haven't even bothered to listen to the conference talk, don't then come up and say, oh, I, I don't think you're right when you said that just now, because that's not the way to get mm. someone on side. The way to get someone on side is to demonstrate that you've paid attention, you've done your research, you've done your homework, and you're you're engaging and that's the best way to get an seo on side is to demonstrate that you're not trying to demonstrate prove them wrong or prove yourself to be better than them you're seeking information and i think that gets lost sometimes and especially with seos trying to prove that they're they're the top dog they want to say oh you said this and you're wrong 
well, actually, if you were paying attention, it's not wrong, but that's okay. You go off and you believe that, and I will just keep ranking above you. Number one, the perspective you have is wrong, meaning, yes, there are superstars on stage, but all of them, if they are that good, they're really nice down to earth people, really, like like Absolutely. no power tripping from all those great SEOs. Number two, like you did, be specific. Ask a specific that the starting point shouldn't be give me the secret of SEO. It should be about something very specific that he or she said. Then number three, the real hack: go to the bar, buy a bottle of vodka, get some glasses, and say. That's the, the best way to get in. Trust me. Yeah. Although that time I <laughs> brought that drinks. bottle of rum to Iceland, I remember most of the night, but not all of it. <laughs> Thing that the problem is you see this group of people and it's very intimidating, but they're just happy to see each other and, and it's a good time. But they will not send you away especially if you come with liquor <laughs> yeah sometimes we're just shy so when i was in i think it was either brussels or amsterdam and i was there with cindy crumb and and a few other people we only hung out together because we were a little bit shy it was a language barrier because i i spoke and understood french but not dutch and you know it was also we were jet lagged we were tired and so we were all standing around a table but we would never have pushed away anyone who came to speak to us and i always tried to make sure that there was room at the table for mm. someone to come up for someone to listen in and there's no way cindy would ever have pushed away anyone mm. even though she was jet lagged and tired we're still if we're at a conference we're happy to speak to you just sometimes we're shy we are people we're not like glamorous superstars we're just ourselves in our own heads we're just us and i'm always surprised when people say i'm intimidating or you know they were scared to approach me they were scared to ask me something i'm like really i don't think i'm scary i i don't dress in spikes and i haven't screamed at anyone lately so i don't oh. think i'm scary yes i can destroy your business very yeah. easily but no, that doesn't mean i will no no you're not scary but you're like like no i don't want to fuck around with her like like she, she, if if things turn bad uh, I, I think she can fire all guns like like uh, it will uh you 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 definitely give that impression of like if <laughs> everything goes power, well great responsibility uh, you you i i can't imagine your garden with like plenty of holes <laughs> yeah you know body, i recently had in there. to have it re-landscaped because i ran out of places to bury the bodies <laughs> so we've re-landscaped and we've made it easier for me to bury new bodies a french uh female CEO had the idea of um because her parents have a lot of land and she wanted to do like a virtual graveyard so if you want to bury a body of somebody yet so she wanted to do this whole thing where yeah, and you can even um do things to the <laughs> i mean i'll let you imagine what what you can get into <laughs> did you did you ever watch the tv show uh hannibal uh, not the tv show no uh, because there's a scene where he um they discover bodies buried uh, there were growing mushrooms on them but they were alive wow okay? so they kept them alive on the ground on the uh, to nice. grow mushrooms and, and yeah. kind of, that kind of thing yeah, <laughs> yeah so you would have to keep them immobile but the mushrooms would quite happily grow bamboo is better though because if you put bamboo slivers in someone who you particularly hates penis and then make sure that it's kept damp and moist but it will root and grow <laughs> that's it yeah you're getting you've st <laughs> you've studied that <laughs> you've thought about it that doesn't come out of nowhere <laughs> you've thought about it but now to 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 go back, we are into the torture side of SEO. Let, let's go back into the flirting, sexy <laughs> part of SEO. Because to seduce Google, yes, it's a love and hate relationship. But there is a way to um, please Google, which today, in my opinion, it's the end of the road. It's over because machine learning took over 
and I see update after update, it just consoli consolidates what I think. So I don't think there is any surprises coming up ever uh, on how you need to proceed to achieve results. The only question mark remaining is time and or money, but yeah. no keyword is impossible. You can rank, you can wank on anything <laughs> you want. You can wank all of the search results. <laughs> you can rank well, and you can rank a double search result. I still see that in certain mm -hmm. verticals. There are lots of things that you can do, but if you don't get the clicks, Google is also watching tinfoil hat, you know, it is watching what is happening. So it knows if you've, you know, done a good job and satisfied your visitor. It also knows when you're sleeping or when you're awake, because it knows by your activity. But yeah, it knows if you've satisfied the desires of the searcher, or if you were just a limp dick, and they had to go out and find another place to go. Especially if we go into the modern world of technology, meaning mobile phone, Android, mobile phone, yeah. Google has so much more power of knowing what's going on yeah. inside that the, 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 because the hardware and the software inside, uh, the power that Apple had <laughs> forever uh, to know what's going on and that Google didn't have, um, that's where it's at. But it doesn't make it less complicated for especially Apple. It's, they've been working for 10 years on their search engine and it's just coming out now in end of 2020 on some features like Siri and Spotlight. Um, so search is difficult and I've followed quant.com and the whole ordeal. It's complicated and even Google is not failing but having difficulties with its all mobile first thing. 20 yeah. years has been a shaky road with a lot of bugs, a lot of problems, issues, uh, core updates that are not core up updates, core updates that do something that they're not supposed to. It's a mess. Um, f they changed the head of search. Ben Gomez is gone mm -hmm. to some education thing. Jeff Dean is gone to AI. And now it's Pragbakar Raghavan. I don't know if you know him, but I've studied that profile him very well. Uh, he's been in search for the past 30 years, worked for IBM, Yahoo, is the head of search, ads, and voice. Wow. He's the head of all three. And he elegance is in simplicity, his, uh, his mojo. He's the one who did J Suite. He's the one who did the cloud. He was VP of ads. He's the man. He's the new cowboy in town. And I am again, okay? In my opinion, he's breaking everything because he wants to figure it out and it doesn't matter search the the it's not ads if something is broken in google ads it's going to be fixed right away who cares about the search results who cares if your website is down and will not recover for the next two years doesn't yeah, matter okay <laughs> or they will get money if that yeah. happens well you you the website owner is pissed, but the search results are still fine. Yeah. And, and, and uh, so people have to understand that the organic search, the search engine is a lot different than Google ads where everything is fine tuned. The, the best engineers, the, 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 they have all the money, they, they make all the money, they have unlimited budgets. Um, and they figure things out very quick. For example, I'll give you an example. GPT-2, I can fit it to Google search with a little bit of tweaking with my, my semantic SEO tools and GPT-2. I, can, I can't write a, a content that pleases the human and Google. I can't do that. But I can produce a content that will please Google very well. It's unreadable by humans, but it doesn't matter. Now, if I tweak it and I make it readable by humans, Google organic will index it, will rank it. But as soon as I ask AdSense to validate the website, 
I get flagged and they say, this is AI, <laughs> go, go away. So, so again, don't, you can try GPT-2, it won't work if you do it like this out of the box, <laughs> but if you know how to tweak it with uh, Semantic SEO, it works. Uh, but, but it didn't get flagged by Google, but got flagged right away, but like, like, like instantly by, uh, by ads, by AdSense, which is, um, interesting, you know, um, uh, and, and when you know how big corporations, especially U S corporation work, they don't talk like, like Google ads, people don't communicate with the True. people from Gmail or <laughs> Android. They, it's very separate. Maybe sometimes, I mean, some of them can be married. Some of them can, can hang out, <laughs> but it's very rare. Uh, it's very much separated. Uh, that's uh, yeah, very true. Mm. Yeah, but it's. I think it's indicative of what's worth what what has value for Google, mm. and what has value for Google is people's ad budgets. Mm. You know, they they do care about SEO because obviously, they do have um, regulators looking at them. So they they don't care about us mm. as much as they care about the money from ads. So, but they do care that we're not mm. going so overboard that we're owning the SERPs. Let's finish on that because that was my number one keyword for a while on my blog. What is Google? What is Google? From the public's perspective, it's a search engine. Mm. From Google's legal perspective, it's an ad agency. <laughs> and from the owner's perspective, it's just a big loads of cash to do whatever they want <laughs> and play with the geeky dreams and and change it's the, the way world or... developing their own flying cars yeah so so you have different Googles depending on where you and and furthermore alphabet what a genius move yeah they saw it coming the dismantling thing the big tech hearing and alphabet is the mothership it's ready to be split up yep. okay, okay. <laughs> It's already made. They yep. just have to say, yeah, Chrome, go away. Uh, Android, go away. But they they knew. They knew. Yeah. That was very smart. The way they set up Alphabet, uh, which is the mothership above all the Google properties. Yeah. Uh, it, it is, uh, they knew they were going to be broken up. There's <laughs> no way that they didn't know. Like the bells, you know, all the baby bells that resulted out of the um, the, the Bell Corporation that was a monopoly for telecoms. Or even Microsoft in 2013 got, got dismantled. So don't worry, guys, you will not see a difference, okay? You you won't notice that that uh, uh, Chrome uh, and, and, this, and, and Google are separated. You will not notice that Instagram and Facebook are separated. It, it will be uh, invisible to you, but uh, from a... From a spamming point of view, that could be very useful. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I can spam it much more effectively then. <laughs> well, okay. One more thing. Because that's interesting, what you just said. We always say, yeah, Google domination is not healthy, blah, 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 blah. We had a SEO contest that was uh, on three, four search, search engines. So, so it was Google, Yahoo, MSN, and a uh, uh, random French search engine, which is called Voila, here, <laughs> um, on, on, on the keyword Shokoku. So Shokoku is a, <laughs> uh, I don't know how you call it, but it's when a girl gives you a blowjob and when you come and she puts a finger up your ass. So shock. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. There's a word for that because usually the thing in, in, in American days it's called a it's called a a shocker. That's 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 the word shocker. A shocker. So, well, yeah, that would be a little bit of a shocker. I would think if it wasn't already up there. <laughs> it's but called it a shocker, a and I was explaining the concept uh, to my to my friends, and we decided on that SEO contest with shock or cue, so a, a shock in the ass. And and um, it took, I think, four years for someone to rank. What I want to say by that is, yes, it's unhealthy to just have Google and to be Google-centric, but don't you agree that if we had to optimize for three or four search engines, that would be a big pain in the ass? 
<laughs> well, it depends on which orifice, but no, it would be because you're currently you optimize for Google and it works on all the other search engines pretty much. Bing is doing more with AI than Google is mm -hmm. in ads, but not necessarily in, in organic search results. So I think it would be difficult if Bing worked in a different way and had a, a significant, as it does, especially in the US, a significant audience. It would make it a lot more challenging if you had to have two or three different code bases that you were working with because search engines were that different. Mm -hmm. So right now, if you optimize for Google, you pretty much catch everybody else. But no, I would not want to live in a world again where I have to optimize differently for different search engines. Because I went through that once. Yeah. And, once and even if they pretend to work the same, even it, to and the information, okay? Because it was hard enough to learn how Google works because <laughs> that's also another thing. The example I gave is, okay, if you want to go uh, do your shopping on Saturday before Christmas, you take your car to the mall, you don't need to know how the engine works. But True. if you are Lewis Hamilton on the wheel of his Formula One, he's not an engineer, but I bet he knows how the flow of gasoline and the, the mechanics of the shocks and all that stuff. Yep. Same for SEO. You don't need to know how a search engine works if it's just SEO 101, if it's just local niche. But at one point at a certain level, if you don't know how a search engine works, you, you're lacking uh, a lot. And I don't think you guys have any uh, course that teaches you. We in France have a, are lucky to have a someone, Sylvain Perroné, PhD in algorithms, who is teaching people how a search engine works. And he's a university uh, level teacher, so he knows very well how to explain. And in two or three days, uh, he saves like 10,000 hours that I spent looking at those stupid research papers and patents and all that stuff. Uh, so what do you yeah. think on those two different, you know, like doing SEO without knowing how it works, the search engine, or, and, and really digging deep and maybe sometimes too deep into, into those, those patents and stuff? I think you have to know how the search engine works, at mm. least generally, because if we look at like Don, Don is super impressive. Don Anderson mm. knows a lot about how the search engine works. And actually you get Googlers referencing her slide decks in order to point people towards how search engines work. So if you've got someone like Dawn, who's done that much study and that much research, and then she comes out and tells you how a search engine is working, you should be reading her deck and understanding how search engines work, not scorning it, because she's done all the hard work for you. But if you don't understand how search engines work, and you eschew, you, you push away something like that amazing work that Don has done, then you're doomed to fail mm. overall because you're not really going to understand why Google is mm. behaving the way it is or why Bing has done this mm. weird thing. I disagree with uh, the fact that Google's uh, reference a SEO when it comes to algorithms. I sure. think, well, it's, I think it's... stuff, so it's information retrieval. It's not uh... necessarily how Google works, yeah. but it is how search engines work in information retrieval. So it's the fundamental building blocks of how search engine works. Yeah, but it's a thin line and, and they crossed it. And um, it's part of where it, this love and hate relationship. And I don't think it's the, the Google's fault. It's the fault that those engineers in Mountain View don't want to talk, okay? They don't want to share. They, they don't want to say anything. So Google, find a way to get them <laughs> to talk. Find a way to get them to share because, because when uh, you have to rely on SEOs to explain how Google works, think about it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> You know, so it's nobody's fault. It's definitely like up there in Mountain View that somebody has, has to not give them an option. It's like it's part yeah. of your duty to explain to people uh, what how does it work? Because those guys in Zurich, uh, 
it's not their fault. I mean, it's definitely like the mothership in in uh, in Mountain View, where uh, everything is decided and everything. Uh, maybe Gary, how uh, can I say his last name? Al yeah. Ives, 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 the Romanian uh, guru yeah. in Mountain View. <laughs> yes, yes. I think yes. Yes. Okay, Gary. Gary is the one maybe who would be in the best position to get those engineers to talk because he's there in Mountain View. And that makes, again, if you understand Corporate America, if you are not in the headquarters, uh, you're not playing uh, the same game than the other ones. Uh, but now it's also interesting to understand that from a very basic point of view, a search engine is not high level algorithm. I mean, if I understood how that works, trust me, you can. It's not so, so, so high level that even if you don't understand the formulas, mm. the explanation of the formulas um, are sane enough. And if you profile the people, if you understand the mindset of the people who build the algorithms, if, if you look at the page rank algorithms, yeah. but more undercover. If you look at Sergey, Sergey Brin's paper, which yeah. was a totally different direction, which is now. So it was the time of page and now it's the time of Brin. Yep. But you need to know this, this scientific paper written by Sergey Brin and they did, okay, it was a decision of like, do we take right or left? They took right, they took the page way. And I think now it's the revenge of Brin. <laughs> uh, even like, like he cares, okay? <laughs> like that was yeah. the that was that was a project, a college project. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, and it, and it worked out very well for them. But I think, you know, one of the ways you learn search is by reading those early papers. And right now, there are so many SEOs out there who don't probably even know that there were papers written in the '90s about how search engines might work you yeah. know they, they have no idea so those that lack of understanding if kids today um that lack of understanding leads to a lack of being a good seo and i think that the difference between a mediocre seo that just kind of stumbles along and gets by and people like the people that i have a girl crush on because i did fucking awesome black hat is understanding those early papers and and what mm. they say about the internet and how it works and you can also do the same things that these guys are doing and get away with it and rank well and make hundreds mm. of thousands of pounds a month also understand when it's not relevant anymore for example of tf idf so the, oh, yeah. the, the it's kind of outdated it's kind of old but also you have the famous lsi keywords as your myth if you understand the algorithm if you understand how heavy it is and how powerful it is there's no way that they you would use it in search uh, it's impossible the, it's, the it, internet it, was too big <laughs> when that when that became a yeah. thing the internet was already too big. And now the internet is so big, Google is having problems with its index. I mean, you know, come on, think about it. If if they're having problems crawling the web, how are they going to use mm. LSI as a methodology of ranking documents? It's it's impossible. And uh, if you want, I'll give you the link. I can't give you in publicly because I don't. Uh, it's, but there is, there is a certain university in America that has uh an lsi lsa experiment running and you can play with it and it's fascinating so it's a very interesting algorithm and it can sound sexy but look okay. at how an fco myth, myth is built 2003 google acquires a company called applied semantics that does lsi so latin semantic annexing latin semantic analysis period so SEOs said, okay, Google buys a company that does LSI or LSA, so they must use LSI, LSA. No, it's not period. It was comma for advertising purposes, meaning it's at the core of something called AdSense. <laughs> so SEOs didn't read the end of the sentence, you know? Yes, Google bought that company, 
but it's LSI for ads. And it makes sense. Don't you, don't you remember the first time I saw AdSense, I was like, what the fuck? It can yeah. understand my content? And that's uh, LSI at work, but it retrieves the page, does the calculation, and then pushes back the ad. That's a whole different game than serving real-time search results yeah. uh, organically uh, and so on. Uh, it can take all the time in the world to do the calculation. Uh, in, in the all... content is unlikely to change. Yeah, and it's and that, uh, especially to, to check um, similarity, uh, not yeah. duplicate content, but something... Uh, paraphrase like you like you say the same thing but differently yeah. that's what it's very useful for but to find keywords makes no sense at all and it's not made for that uh, yeah. so not only google doesn't use it but it makes no sense to use it to search keywords and you have to dig a little bit to understand that uh, yeah and, and, but people kids today they, they people don't want to dig they want to be handed the information on a, on a silver platter so they, they don't have to think. And one of the problems with SEO or one of the benefits is that you have to think all the time. You know, the, the, the times that I have been under time pressure and I've had to do stuff really quickly and I haven't been able to look deeply at something are the times when I haven't done as well as when I've had time to sit down and think. If you don't think your way through SEO, you make mistakes mm -hmm. or you don't get you don't squeeze all the juice out of the orange. You leave some of the, the delicious juice behind. <laughs> you know, you don't squeeze all of the juice that could have come out of that orifice. <laughs> Talking about juice coming out of an orifice, if you, not everything is what it seems. And you might see a very sexy guy and he's on the beach and he's got muscles and he's walking and he's, he's tan and he's good looking and so on. Um, so same with those SEO concepts or myth and channel is called SEO conspiracy for something. Okay. Um, so from a distance you want to believe it sounds very sexy. It looks very sexy, but beyond the white night, what one night stand <laughs> that, uh, no. Okay. So. Yeah. Sometimes you don't even want the one night stand. When yeah, the, the first thing that comes out of his mouth, they are like, no, okay, please go away. <laughs> and, 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 and the same with those um, SEO myth and urban. Okay, I, I'm thinking out loud because I could not believe that in 2020, I would have to add to my list of SEO myth to debunk keywords density. Oh my God. But I did hear or read what this hell? week on a Reddit subreddit, somebody arguing and legit saying, yeah, this is how I do it. I work on keyword density and it works very well for me. 2020. It wasn't true in 2000 or 1872 when you started SEO. <laughs> so it's definitely not true in 2020 or 2021. Yeah. Uh, you have to say your keyword yeah. once. Or a semantically related keyword. Exactly. One. And that's it. You write naturally because as you write naturally, you are using language that signals to Google through the way that you use English or Spanish or French or Italian or German or, or Greek or Portuguese or anything. The words that are around the, the page tell Google what the page is about because otherwise it's not about anything. The issue here is about how you explore the topic and the, 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 you need to explore and you need to put your head down between the legs and stick your tongue out because you hire someone to write about something, but that person is a professional writer who writes about everything and anything. So yes, natural language, but if you don't have those uh and not no synonyms none of the the terms okay that everything that surrounds the topic everything that is relevant around the topic you need a little bit of knowledge to to do that yeah, yeah. you need to understand what google is looking for and, and to do that you need to understand how google works so it all comes back to understanding the fundamentals if you don't know where the clit is you're never going to mm. satisfy a woman 
And if you don't know the fundamentals of how Google search works, you're never going to satisfy the search engine. Same then with the girl, guys. You need where the G spot is. You need to look for it. You don't know. It's hidden and it changes from woman to woman. It's, uh, it's moving around. It's up there somewhere. So the G spot <laughs> SEO is you need to search. You don't know if you will find it, but that's that's where you need to focus all your attention on is is search i mean your job is about search okay it's um, delivering search results yeah. but you need to search and you're not sure to find it but you need to investigate you need experience g spot is yoga is it's a it's a mystery this g spot but 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 it exists and um ah but just like a woman and a woman's g spot google has given us hints and yes. direction on how to find its yes. g-spot but you have to do the work if you're not willing to do the work you'll never satisfy google for sure if it, if it, if it's the end of 2020 and you still believe in keywords density that's wow don't you even take your pen don't take your pens down okay keep your pens up <laughs> don't, don't unzip don't, <laughs> don't leave the day job oh wait no leave the day job <laughs> Unzip your pants to take a piss, but nothing else. Yeah, yeah. SEO, to to end up the talk, because is, uh, we are going on an hour and 40 minutes, wow. what you said before was um, the, 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 the trunk, okay, yeah. is the same. The mindset is the same. Yes. Just the branches, the flowers, the, the leaves, everything around, but, but the the pillars are exactly the same than 20 years ago. It's true. The, Nothing the has changed. The fundamentals of mm. SEO that are written about by by Sergey, um, uh, well, Larry Page initially and Sergey Brin, but those those papers, those patents, they are still relevant now, just like they were then. The fundamentals of SEO really haven't changed that much. It's just the finesse that goes on top that has mm. changed. Our Google's understanding of language has changed. But there were agencies out there saying, oh, well, well we now need to optimize your website for BERT. No, you don't. <laughs> you don't need to optimize your website for BERT. It is how Google understands your website slightly differently. If you have to change your website for BERT, you were fucked from the beginning and not in a good way. <laughs> so seriously, you the core fundamentals of SEO have not changed. The finesse has. And yes, that means Neil Patel sometimes is right, but only at the very most basic, basic, basic level. Everything else that goes on top, he's wrong about because he was only right in 2012 and we're 2020 now and it's all wrong. So the core fundamentals are strong and they are stable and they are static. But all the other stuff that's around it keeps changing and you need to understand why you don't need to optimize for BERT, but you do need to optimize for semantic relevance. This is the thing. Um, let me rephrase it. You need to give Google what it wants, future yeah. tense, instead of what it has, present and or past, while respecting the user intent, while respecting that smell of the syrup and so on. So it's tricky because if you give uh the same signal than everybody else when it comes down to okay you need to push hard and uh be uh, <laughs> uh yeah just uh, sm smack smack that smack that smack ass until you 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 you, you 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 um explode or or you you hit number one spot most likely you will blow up uh, in space but otherwise if you're smart about it, you can give Google something different than the other ones and please it very well because you will have mastered the art of seduction and doing things that uh, your um, partner or Google is not is not used to. And you, that partner, the girl is going to be, ooh, that's uh, new and different. I like it. Same with Google. So you need to respect fundamentals. First, you need to go on a date, blah, blah. And then you need to do all the seduction thing. But then when it comes down to action, 
be a little smarter about it. To exactly. do some some experiments and look at what does Google want future. I think that's a good way to end it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So now, guys, G Spot SEO, that was the soft version. Mm. Watch out what, with what's coming up next with Judith Lewis. She is going to unleash, and I'll make sure of it. Uh, <laughs> the hardcore version comes <laughs> out later. In the meantime, thank you, my friend, for coming up, for coming on uh, the, the podcast, and we, everybody we else. All the other ways later. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching, and until next time, take care.